Welcome to the Wealth Matters Podcast, where investors come together to better understand how to build passive cash flow and create generational wealth without all the confusing mumbo jumbo. Here's your host and co author of Amazon number one bestseller, Alpesh Pamar. Welcome to Wealth Matters Podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying your day. Today is episode number 356, and I want to talk, talk about real estate again. Real estate, as you guys know, is my favorite type of investment. And uh, we have spoken from single family to apartment buildings, mobile home parks, senior housing facilities, self-storage, retail shopping center, and whatnot on Wealth Matters podcast. But uh, a lot of you have been sitting on sidelines because of the prices, um, you know, skyrocketing in real estate as well as the higher interest rate. So some of you reached out to me um, and asked me questions about single family real estate. Of course, as you guys know, I do not invest in single families anymore uh, for myriad of reasons. Uh, number one being it's not scalable. Uh, if I want to continue to uh, create in, enough passive income for myself. I have to continue to buy at least 10 houses a year, single family, and you know scale it up to like 100 houses. Uh, that's going to take me a while. And also, uh, Fannie and Freddie only allows maximum 10 uh, of traditional um, mortgages, right? So that means that I will run out of those traditional mortgages and I'll have to start looking into commercial mortgages uh, at some point. So this is one of the reasons. The second is um, diversif diversification, right? So if I buy a single family, let's say in Bay Area, and, and then I'm stuck with the amount of, you know, uh, price I pay for the property, um, and I can't invest anywhere else, or let's say if I invest in Austin, I am stuck with that market unless I, you know, buy five houses in Austin and then five is somewhere else then now I have a, a headache of managing all those properties, even though I'll be working with my property manager, right? So that's another thing, diversification, that gives me diversification by market. But also, let's say if I buy a 100 unit property in one market, now I have diversification by units, right? So if, even if one or five or 10 units are vacant, I'm still getting income from 90 some units, right? This is just an example. And this is why now we uh, invest in large mobile home parks, uh, mostly in mobile home parks. And then uh, we have some investments in sing, um, sorry, um, senior housing facilities and um, retail shopping centers. So uh, that's where I am. But uh, again, someone asked me which markets to invest in right now. They are again looking at Dallas and Austin. And uh, personally, I think Dallas and Austin uh, are pretty much as of now done. You should wait for, you know, th these things to shake out and then look at the market again. I think those markets are still good, but may not be the right time. And personally, I don't invest in California, especially not in San Francisco Bay Area, because the rent to price ratio does not make sense. And that is what we will talk about today. So, and of course, you know, I don't want to buy a million dollar or a couple million dollar house and put all my eggs in one basket. So this is why I buy out of state. Some of my favorite markets have been personally where I have invested and I continue to invest um, as Birmingham, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Tennessee, some markets in Tennessee, and of course, a lot of markets in North Carolina and South Carolina, right? So those are some of my favorite markets or states. And we also expanded, we have a single senior housing facility, which we built in uh, Davenport, Iowa market. And we recently acquired a mobile home park in Topeka, Kansas market. So we are also focused a lot in uh, Midwest. Uh, some of the markets which I like, but I have not invested um, uh, are like Little Rock, Arkansas, um, maybe Memphis, Tennessee, but uh, Indianapolis, Indy, and uh, you know Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention we do have a retail uh, shopping center in Kansas City, Missouri. So those those are some of the markets. But just I was just researching, um, uh, you know, the upcoming market or the latest markets for cash flow, and um, you know, Bigger Pockets had some uh, names as well for those markets. Uh, does not have any of the markets I suggested. Um, except the Fiatville, North Carolina. But uh, 
and why they are saying the cash flow markets, it's, it's very important. You want to have cash flow to go through to the difficult times, right? It's very important right now, maybe you are able to, especially people who want to invest in San Francisco Bay Area or Austin, they, they think that, oh, the, as long as the rent covers the mortgage, that's great. But most of the time that rent won't even cover the mortgage. So they are putting the money from their pocket, thinking that in three, five years, when the property values doubles, they will sell. So it's, it's basically, Real estate will appreciate, but you, again, you cannot time the market. Let's see, you need the money before you know the market appreciates. Now you are stuck. Either you got to sell uh, at a lower price, or you know you have to just figure out how to continue, or you lose your job or the uh, you know main income, and now you cannot continue to pay the mortgage for this rental property because I think the mortgage for your own property or the single or the primary house you live in it would be more important than the rental property, right? So this is why one thing we look at is called rent to price ratio uh, or RTP uh, is that you want to see how much rent you are going to get if you um, you know buy this house. So again, for uh, simplicity, I'm going to take this number uh, I, I know you are going to say that, oh, of course, I, you, uh, no one can find a house worth 100 grand in US. No, you can in some markets. And I have personally found uh, a lot of time, right? So I'm going to take that number that if the, if the house you buy or the property you acquire is worth 100 grand or you paid 100 grand for it, then the rent should be around $1,000 a month. So then the rent to price ratio would be one percent and that was the golden rule when the real estate market was struggling and slowly going up so this is how it worked between 2000 i would say 10 to 2007 16 17 then the ratio got started you know uh, skewing uh, towards lower side right so just looking back at the graph the rent to price ratio um, in us um, and I'm looking back at 2005 and all. in around 2005, it was like 0.5%. So basically, if you bought a house worth 100 grand, the rent would be around 500 bucks a month. It went even down in 2007 to almost 0.43%. And then, of course, the market started correcting. So the ratio kept going back up and it hit the most, the average one. It hit in 2012, which was 0.55%. And this is the US data, not you know, market-wise. And then since 2012, it started going down. And in 2019, it, uh, it was little below 0.5%. So rent to price ratio is very important. And that is what I first look at it as soon as I you know, uh, look at a property. If I was looking at a single family residence or duplex or a fourplex, and then the, of course the Second thing I look at is the migration, right? Job pattern, the migration, business, uh, this is et cetera. And the third is, is the market landlord friendly or tenant friendly, right? So those are some of the things you should keep in mind. And, um, you know, of course, the home values have gone up, but the rent growth has not kept up. Uh, with the home value, the rents have gone up, but hasn't kept up, right? So, of course, now uh, that point, uh, sorry, 1% uh, RTP, uh, I was mentioning, that was one of the best case scenario. It has gone down to now people looking at around 0.7 would be your, you know, median or average that you, you at least want to get in at around 0.7% rent to price ratio. And, uh, some of the markets I found through bigger pockets are Macallan, Texas, where the rent to price ratio is the highest right now. It's 0.84%. So if you buy a median priced home, which would cost you around 95 grand, and the rent would be median rent would be around 800 bucks. So that's pretty much 0.84%. Then you have Odessa, Texas, 0.73%. Corpus Christi in Texas, 0.72%. El Paso, Texas, 0.69. Decatur, Illinois, 0.68%. Fayetteville, North Carolina, 0.65%. Mobile, Alabama, 0.64%. Lubbock, Texas, 0.63%. 
Rochester, New York, 0.62%, Flint, Michigan, 0.62%. So believe it or not, out of top 10, six, uh, sorry, five are in Texas, right? And that tells you what, one, the Texas market is still strong, right? Second, there is a lot of, you know, job and, and, and um, you know, people migration. Um, and third, the Texas is a landlord friendly state. So you can't go wrong. Again, I don't know any of this, anyone in those markets. So I won't be able to provide any, um, you know, advice or referral. Um, I think Fayette will North Carolina would be one of the market if I had to pick for myself because um, we do own um, a mobile home park um, close to Fayetteville. Uh, and the rent to price ratio is 0.65%. So if you buy a median home, which is priced 153 grand, you would get rent of around 988 uh, per month. Uh, just comparing this to San Francisco Bay Area, if you buy a million dollar house right now, your rent would be around um, maximum 4,000 bucks a month. So that would net to get you 4% rent to price ratio. And that means that you would not cover your mortgage plus your property tax, et cetera, from the rent. So this is very important to keep in mind when you are investing. Let me know what you think of this episode and if I can help you guys anyway. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Matters podcast. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating on iTunes so others can enjoy the show too. Have a great week and happy investing!